Hi, today we're going to be making a 3D compass in Action Script 3. So we're going to draw a circle that's 400 by 400 px. And then we're going to evenly place the text for north, south, east, and west. So we just got to check the horizontal axis. Alright, so now we're going to convert the whole thing into a movie clip, place the registration point at the center, and we're going to call it Comp. Now we're going to open up the Actions panel and create an object called Depth Object with another object inside of that called Rotation Wise, and then inside of that is going to be an object for each face inside of the Comp movie clip to store the min and max degree values for the cued points of the 3D rotation. Now we're going to add a slider to the bottom of the stage and we named that rotation slide and we gave it a maximum value of 360. So now we added another slider to the left of the stage and called it display list. Right here we're creating a stage event listener called enter frame loop and we're going to use that to do various things like refresh the 3D depth of the compass and also use it for the bottom slider. So the first thing we're going to use it for is to update the text at the top with the current 3D rotation of the compass. So we also got to set up the perspective projection so that we can have a static view of the 3D object on the stage. Now set the points to the center of the compass which is X and Y and then we're going to assign the perspective projection function to the compass using compass.transform.perspective projection equal PP. On the Y axis we subtract it and then it looks like it has a good view from there. Now we're going to start drawing the faces for the compass, like F1 and F2. And uh, this is going to be the first face, it's going to be called face F1. So this side is red and the other side is grey. And then we just name that F1. Line 14, we're going to type comp.f1.z plus equal 20 so that it's going to have a higher elevation over the blue part of the compass. Now I'm drawing the dark red side of the compass that's going to be like the extruded part of the compass and we're going to have the registration point at the left side and we're going to rotate it to align with the arrow of the compass. And we're also going to do that for the other side with the registration point set to the right. And we named each of those faces F2 and F3. So yeah, comp to F2 dot rotation Y should be negative 90. And the same for F3, negative 90. Now we have to copy and paste face F2 and F3 and duplicate the symbol so that it allows us to change the colors to gray. And then we rotate it 180 degrees and align it with the other side of the compass. So we named each of these faces face F4 and F5 and we rotated it by negative 90. Okay, so all the way around we want the, the main needle to have a highest depth from 0 to 360 so that's what we put for face F1 and now we're creating two stage event listeners one is for when we place the mouse down and the other one is for when we release the mouse okay we are creating a variable called less obs that's gonna store the last movie clip that the left slider was on and also the last size that it had in width so now in the mouse down function if the last thing we clicked on was the left slider, which is called display list, we're going to store that in a variable to remember for when we go to the mouse up function. So this variable is called selected slide, and we assign that to be e.target.parent. Dot dot 
Also we can do if e.target.parent doesn't equal null. So then if we click on a part of the stage that doesn't have a parent by accident, we don't get an error in the output. When mouse up, if selected slide is display list, we're going to trace true. We're going to turn the selected slide variable back to null. Now each time the mouse is up, we're going to call the resize face function. And we're going to resize the face inside of the comp movie clip to be double the size the slider on the left is on that value. Inside of the resize face function we are also going to store the old value before we double the size and also the old face so then when we move the slider to the left each time we turn the old face that we had double the size back to its normal size and then the new face that we're on to the double size. Now we're going to create an XML socket and we're going to give it two event listeners. One is for when we connect and the other one is for when we receive compass data. We're going to connect to the socket through localhost 45055 plus the comp port number of the MCU. And once we're connected it's going to output connected and then this is where we're going to modify the rotation value of the compass. We put comp.rotationy equal e.data which is the compass's value. To start off with current face equal f1 in the loop so that each time we're at face 1 we can swap the depth to be the highest depth since it has its range from 0 to 360 it will always be the highest depth. Now afterwards we can use this same if statement for each face and it's pretty simple to modify the 3D depth as we rotate through the compass. the left slider and it resized this face called F2 and I'm looking at the degrees and face F2 should be from 153 189 degrees 154 to 189 degrees it should be overlapping So we're going to rephrase the if statement because it's a little bit more confusing when it's written this way. So we're going to put rot comp.rotationy before the rotation y of the movie clip inside of the if statement so that it looks more organized. 
So without using the left slider or anything, we can easily click on face F4 and see from 171 degrees to 309 degrees that should be the face overlapping. So we're adding that to the depth object and we're also creating an if statement for it. Now what that if statement does is when it's that statement's turn, that's the face that's going to overlap at the right time. All around we just repeat the same process which is pretty simple and we give it an if statement for each face. So right here we can see that faces like face F2 are going to need another section called min2 and max2 inside of its object so that we can have various sections where it will overlap at the right time. So we put from 345 degrees to 360 degrees, face F2 will overlap as well and then we modified the if statement a bit to say 2 for each min and max part. And the same goes for face F3 which is going to overlap at its right time. So on line 33 what we're doing is if rotation y is greater than 360 we can set the rotation value back to 0 so that it doesn't go to 361 which is not a real degree value. And also if it goes less than 0 it doesn't go to negative 1 we're bringing it back to 360. So just by seeing it rotate like that just by eyeballing it a little bit I can see that I have room to modify certain parts that are a little bit glitchy. So I, I modified in face F5 the min part and it looks like I should put that back and go to max and that's the part that actually fixed the glitchy part. Now we can comment out line 38 so that it doesn't automatically rotate and uncomment the socket.connect part so that we can receive values from the compass. So we created the setup and the loop function and then at the top we're including the compass library and we're going to set the data transfer rate for AS3 and then on line 2 we're creating an instance of compass so that at line 5 we can do compass.begin and then in the loop each time around we can compass.read and then pass that to the socket with the no byte at the end. Now that that part's finished we can set up the circuit for the compass. So we're going to place the Arduino Nano on the breadboard with the adapter for the micro USB and then also the compass module that's going to be wired to the Arduino Nano. So we put VCC on 3.3 volts, ground to the ground of the Arduino Nano. SDA goes to A4 and SCL goes to A5. That's the wiring for it, but it's important to solder it so that we get the correct readings when we're rotating the compass. that it is working just fine and um, you really have to have it exactly on the x-axis of the, the earth so that we can have it rotated perfectly. With more math done for the y and z axis you can have a less strict rotation on the x-axis. Alright thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.